Okay, so in this video we're going to go over estimating definite integrals when you're just given the graph of a function. So you see here I have drawn a graph, a little colorful, and we're going to want to compute all of that orange stuff that I've shaded in. That's That stuff that I've shaded in represents the value of the definite integral. Now remember how this thing works. If the function lies above the x-axis, the value of the integral over that region is going to be positive. But as soon as the graph goes underneath the x-axis, then the value of the integral will become will be negative over that region. So notice here, the stuff that I'm sort of outlining in green right now, that part is above the x-axis. So the integral is going to make that positive. But then below the x-axis, right over here, the integral is going to assign a negative number to that. All right, so if you just look at the picture, it looks like there's more minus than there is plus, so the interval, the integral over the entire interval from 2 to 7 should be positive, or neg rather negative. So let's see what if that's going to pan out. All right, so remember this is what we're after, the definite integral of this function f over the region 2 to 7. What is that going to be? So we're going to use Riemann sums as usual, and if we're going to get a best estimate for this integral, what are we going to do? Well, you know it. Just take the right-hand Riemann integral, the or Riemann sum, the left-hand Riemann sum, and take their average. So let's go ahead and get the compute the right-hand sum. So we have this region, and all we're going to do is start making a rectangle. So here's one rectangle. Here's another, or those are the intervals over which we're going to make rectangles. You see there are four. Okay, so let's go to region one. How are we going to make the rectangle? Well, we're using, we're computing a right-hand sum, so we're going to use 3 as the endpoint. Let me use green. We're going to use 3 as the endpoint there. And you see the rectangle we make is like that. And what's the area of that rectangle? It's simply going to be the length, which is 1. So delta t equals 1 here. So we're going to have 1 as the length, and the height is just 3 fourths. So we multiply by 3 fourths, that's going to be the area of rectangle 1. Let's go to the rectangle 2. So we're going to take the right endpoint. Well, that's going to be 5, and now look at this. It's negative there. See the value or the height is negative 1 half. So we'll have negative 1 half. And now look at this. Again, a little bit different. The length of that rectangle, so let's go ahead and draw that rectangle like this. Remember the height? is negative one-half because we're using the right endpoint. But the length this time is 2 because 5 minus 3 is 2. So we'll multiply that by that height by 2. All right, so far so good. Let's go to rectangle 3. We're going to use the right endpoint, so we're going to use 6 to get the height. Draw the height there. See the, in, the rectangle goes a little bit underneath the graph. And that area is going to be, well, the height is negative 1. And then we'll add, or sorry, multiply by 1, because that's the length in this case. So this delta t is 1. And then finally, in region 4, we see that the height of the rectangle is going to be negative 1 again. So we plug in negative 1. And we multiply by 1, because that's the length of the rectangle. So now the Riemann sum tells us to add all of these areas up. So we get 3 fourths plus negative 1 half times 2. That's just negative 1. So 3 fourths plus negative 1, just this part right here, that's going to be negative 1 fourth. Let's go over here. Negative 1 times 1, negative 1 times 1, well, that's negative 2. So when you add up all those things, you're going to get, well, those aren't division bars. Let's just be careful there. So we're going to get negative 2 and 1 fourth. So, that, of course, that's going to be the same as negative 9 over 4. All right, so that's the right-hand sum. So let's do it for the left-hand sum now. So this time, we're going to go, we still have four regions, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I messed that up. Here we go, I, V, there we go. And for the first rectangle, since we're taking a right hand, well, we're doing the left hand sum, we're going to use the left endpoint to form the rectangle. 
So there we go. You see, so this time we're overestimating the area in region one. So we have one times the length, which is one. So the height is one and the length is one. Great. Let's go to region two. So again, we're going to take the left endpoint. And so notice this time, we're going to make a rectangle that's above the x-axis because the function is positive at the left endpoint. So this case, in region 2, the height is going to be negative, uh, positive 3 fourths, and we'll multiply that by the length, which is positive 2. Remember, in this case, delta t equals 2 because 5 minus 3 is 2. All right, so let's move on to rectangle 3. Take the left endpoint again. This time it's going to be negative. There we go. And so we know the height is negative a half and the length is 1. And in rectangle 4, we have a height of negative 1. So again, the left endpoint. And then a height, a height of negative 1 and the length of 1 because 7 minus 6 is 1. So the Riemann sum tells us to add up all these numbers. Let's see what we get. These first two. 1 times 1, well, that's 1. That was easy. 3 fourths times 2, that's 8 fourths. Okay. Negative 1 half times 1, that's negative 1 half. And then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So if I add up all these numbers, 1 plus uh, 8 fourths is actually 12 fourths. Right? And I'm going to uh, add 1 half and negative 1 half and negative 1, so that's minus 3 halves. Oops. And of course, we can convert that to all, all of it to fourths, so we have 6 over 4, and that's positive 6 over 4. Aha! So when we did the left hand sum, we get a positive 6 over 4, which is actually simplifies to 3 over 2, so let's just write it like that. So you get positive 3 over 2 for the left-hand sum. So now let's see. We want to get the best estimate for the integral, so let's average the left-hand sum and the right-hand sum. The left-hand sum was positive 3 over 2. The right-hand sum was, well, let's go back and see what it was. It was negative 9 over 4. So plus negative 9 over 4, and then we'll divide by 2. So we have 6 over 4 plus negative 9 over 4 divided by 2. That's the same thing as negative 3 over 4 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 3 over 8. Aha, and we were right. The integral was going to be, is a the, the approximation to the integral at least is negative, so that's that checks out. And the reason for that is simply because the function spent more time underneath the x-axis than it did above the x-axis. Okay, So the final answer is negative, and in particular, the uh, estimate of an s an estimate for the definite integral of that function is negative 3 over 8.